Coach Eider, uh, you're going into the second season here. Like I said, you haven't been here a full calendar year yet. Uh, you were hired in November, kind of one of the latest hires I've ever actually heard of <laughs> in the sport of wrestling. That's pretty late to be hired. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you, you're know, you taking the program in a new direction. Uh, kind of brought one of the all-time greats back in uh, Matt Valenti. Talk about the decision to, to try and get Matt back here. Well, you know, Matt, when I go out and recruit, and I want to recruit, you know, the top talent in the country, uh, top kids in the country academically, um, you know, these kids have to understand that they can do it at Penn. And Matt did it at Penn. Um, he did it twice, which is even that much more impressive. Um, so it's important that I can have someone that's done it in my office, that's gone through it, knows the system here at Penn, knows how to compete both on the mat and then in the classroom. And um, you, can, you can physically see him sitting right there. It's not a picture I'm showing or anything like that. And then again, whether Matt's whether Matt did that or not, um, Matt's a very good coach, so he's the best choice for the position, anyways. Um, but for me to bring Matt back was was a, a, a nice step and a good positive step for for the program and, and the uh, the university as well. Um, brings us right back to that national recognition, and uh, you know, again, trying to get kids in, they can understand that hey, this is what we want. This is this is what we're going to strive for right here. Is uh, and we're setting the bar high for the these incoming recruits and the, and the current kids on the team right now. Okay, you guys are an Ivy League school, um, similar to your Harvard, your Princeton's, uh, academically, Wharton College School of Business, one of the top, the top school of business, I believe, in the United States, but mm -hmm. if not world, but. Does that hold you back here at Penn, being such an excellent academic institution for wrestlers, at least, to get them in? Uh, no, not at all. To be honest with you, uh, over the last few years, um, we've noticed, or I've noticed a trend where all these top wrestlers are academically uh, good, um, for the most part. They can uh, get into a, a Cornell or a Harvard or a Penn, um, and they can wrestle. So our, our, co our recruiting pool has slowly grown to where a few years ago we started with a lot of recruits and it gets small very quick. Uh, now it's starting to get uh, a bigger and, and wider and I think that's a, a good indication of the high school coaches paying more attention to the academic side of their athletes uh, and, and the families, the parents, uh, really striving for the academic side when the kids are in high school. Uh, it opens up a lot more doors for the, for the kids uh, to have an opportunity to come and, and graduate at Penn is huge, um, and uh, it's nice that we can recruit a, a wide range of, of kids um, as opposed to just three or four that can academically uh, get in. So, All right, the uh, Quakers had, I believe, six qualifiers this past year in your first season, mm -hmm. which is kind of probably an average number for you guys, mm -hmm. six. Six, you said you've had eight before in the past. Under uh, Reyna, I believe. Yeah, I'm not quite sure exactly how many coach had. But, but eight, eight's eight, 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 eight out of ten is a pretty good number. Yeah. Eighty percent mm -hmm. betting eight hundred. But uh, no All Americans the last two years. The Quakers haven't had an All American the last two years. Matt actually come back on staff as your last All American when he won the NCAAs. Oh, uh, what are you going to do to get another All American here or get another Matt Valenti up on that the, the uh, stage wrestling for first and second? Yeah. Well, we're just we're just going to keep keep training hard, keep plugging away. Uh, getting the kids in, working on, on skills, uh, paying a lot more attention to the kids individually, uh, preparing them. And, um, you know, again, having Matt and, and my other assistant, Josh, uh, having a full staff this year. Uh, we kind of, last year, it was just Josh and I. Um, and uh, so now we have a full staff. We can uh, take care of everybody and, and move forward. All right, you guys moving forward, uh, talk about what you think, maybe your 125 hunter. Uh, Raleigh took out of that, you know, he loses in the round of 12 two years in a row. Yeah. And what's Raleigh going to do to be an All-American or, or getting in the national final? Yeah, he's a competitor. Um, he, he, he'll, he's a fighter. He's, he's got a, a, a different style of wrestling to him. And, and he knows right now this is his last chance. And um, he's training hard over the summer. And he's really looking forward to, you know, starting, starting the year off and, and just moving forward. Um, you know we need to we need to scout his opponents and uh, get him going and make sure that he knows uh, you know the 
Nickerson's at Cornell and, and you know, at top notch. Those are those are who we're shooting for. Um, you know, he, he had a great year last year. Um, he had some really exciting matches with uh, ASU's kid, Robles. Um, had some very good matches with Nickerson. Uh, came up a little short, but he's right there. Um, so we, we need to fine-tune one or two things with Raleigh, and he's, he's, he can beat anybody in the country. All right, what's the training situation going to look like here for, for Matt? He's not his assistant, but from what it sounds like, he's going to get back at 60 kilos is what mm -hmm. it sounds like. What's the training situation going to hold for him? Will he be training and heading off to, uh, you know, foreign lands during the season? If so, how will that affect you know the team and his relationship with the team and how much he can work with them? Well, I think it's a I think it's a positive effect. Uh, again, raising the bar, uh, what we were talking about before, um, having a guy that's training to make a world team or Olympic team is just the next step, the next level, and it's important for my young guys to see that and to see the the extra work that he puts in. Um, plus, he's going all over the world and bringing back all that technique um, to our guys. So it's it's a huge benefit to them as well. Um, and Matt and I have talked about his training situation and his travel plans and things like that. We're going to be selective on on uh, where he goes and how long he's gone for. Um, but I'd be more than happy to have Matt make a world team. Uh, like, you know, like again, it, he brings it back to Penn, and that's. You know, it brings it brings us uh, more notoriety, uh, but more importantly, Matt's out there. He's competing. He's training, and, and bringing all that technique back, uh, whether it's out at the training center or over in Russia, uh, wherever he goes. What's different that Rob Eider does from maybe Roger Rania or uh, Zeke Jones? What are you doing differently here as the head coach? Um, you know, again, I don't think it's anything different. It's uh, you know, again, I'm very, uh, I'm, I'm a family guy. Uh, I think of these guys all as my extended family. I uh, want to take care of them, make sure that they're doing things right, they're making the right choices, um, and they're building their character up. Uh, I don't know if that's different from any other coach. Uh, I might just have a different approach, um, but uh, that's my main job, and, and uh, you know, just spending time with everybody, making sure they have, they have everything they need uh, to succeed. And I want to provide everything for my team to make sure they succeed on the mat and off the mat uh, in, the, in the classroom.